Hey guys, so today we're going to try to make that iconic snake game using plain vanilla JavaScript with no external libraries. So I'm going to bring you guys along for the journey. To begin with, I'm going to make a HTML file. I'm going to call it index.html. Give it the boilerplate HTML. And we're going to give it a title of snake game. Okay, in the body, we're going to need to use a canvas. And this canvas is going to have some properties. It's going to have a class because we need to select it. Just for now, I call canvas. It's going to have a height of 300. It's going to have a width of 300 as well. And we're going to give it a background color as well. And we're going to give it a nice gray color. 333. Three, three. Cool. So now, if I save that and open the file here, we can see we have this nice canvas and we seem to have an extra bracket as well. We can delete that and refresh. And okay, so we have this canvas 300 pixels high by 300 pixels wide. So this is nice, but snake needs a snake. So let's make a snake. So we're gonna start off with a draw file, draw.js. And we're going to require this JavaScript file here in a script tag. Uh, with source equals draw.js and now here we're going to have to select the canvas so we're going to say const canvas equals document dot query selector and we're selecting by class name so dot canvas and we're just going to print out the canvas just to show that everything here is going on okay nice so our canvas is printing and now we need to get the context of the canvas so we can draw on it. So we can say const ctx equals canvas dot get context 2D. Cool. And we're gonna use something we're gonna use scale here just so that we're gonna format this canvas into kind of like rows and columns. And actually these rows and columns are gonna be 10 pixels square so we're going to say const scale equals 10 and this means we're going to have rows and the rows are going to be canvas dot height divided by scale so this is the amount of rows we're going to have and we can do the same thing for columns except the columns we're going to divide the width by the scale nice and we're going to need a snake so how are we going to do the snake? Well, we're going to make a new file for the snake and we're going to make it kind of object oriented. So this is just going to call it snake.js. New file, save as snake.js. Right, and this is going to take a, have a constructor method, snake. And what does the snake need? It's going to need an X coordinate is just going to be zero and a y coordinate which is going to be zero nice and we're going to give this snake a draw method equals function doesn't take any arguments what's this function going to do it's going to fill a rectangle x dot fill rect and where is this rectangle going to be it's going to be this dot x this dot y and what size is it going to be it's going to be scale cool so it's just going to be a square for now and what do we need to do we'll set a color and we're just going to make the snake white really boring nice so if i save that and go back here to draw we're going to make a setup function i think This function is going to call itself straight away, so that's why we're wrapping it here in extra brackets. And this setup is going to initialize the snake as a snake, and we're using our constructor method, and then we're just going to call snake.draw. If we save that and go back to our window, refresh, we can see yeah, we have this lovely white square in the corner. Nice. But in the game snake, doesn't the snake usually move? So how are we gonna do that? Well, I guess we're gonna need a timeout. 
or an interval slash interval takes a callback function and we're just going to do this four times a second every 250 milliseconds so what's going to happen here well i guess we could do snake.update so the snake's going to need an update method and we put draw in after this cool so now we need to implement this update method this dot update equals function okay that's happening here so let's give this next some velocity so we're going to say x speed which is the speed it's moving on the x coordinate we're going to initialize that to 10 because that's our scale so let's just do scale multiply by one nice and y speed we're just going to say zero for now and inside this dot update this is going to be called four times a second so let's update x to increment by x speed and the same for y cool so is that all our update needs for now i think it is so if we go back here and just check this is all okay and refresh this x speed is not defined okay i think i forgot this And if we refresh, we can see that now it's moving. Okay, it's moving, but we seem to be not clearing that. So let's use clearrect here. Ex dot clearrect, and we're going to give it zero from zero to zero. Canvas dot width and canvas dot height. And if we refresh again, we can see that, yeah, it's clearing where the snake has been and the snake's moving along. So now that we have our snake, we need to handle key presses. So inside our draw, we're going to add an event listener. And we're listening for a key down. So when a key down occurs, we're getting an event. Callback function. For now, we're just going to print out this event to see what it looks like. So whenever I press up, we're printing out this event. Is there anything useful? Oh, we can use this, nice. So this event.key is gonna be useful to us. So we're gonna say const direction equals event.key. And we're gonna replace arrow with just an empty string. If we print out this direction now, we should be getting something pretty nice that we can use save that refresh our page we can see if i press up left down and right that's going to be really useful nice so we have access to the snake here so we can say snake dot change direction and we're going to pass in the direction so now we need to implement this change direction function this dot change direction equals function and what's it going to do well, this is going to take an argument of the direction. And we have four cases. So let's use a switch statement, which takes the direction. And we have four cases. So let's do case, start off with up. So in the case of up, what do we need to do? We need to change the x speed to zero and the y speed to scale multiplied by one. Right, so this dot x speed equals zero and this dot y speed equals scale multiplied by one. We save that, refresh our page, when we press the up key. You can see oh it's moving down that's not right so y speed needs to be minus and if we save that refresh again and go up we can see yeah it's moving up but it's moving out which isn't good so we also need to handle that but we'll do that after so let's just deal with our four cases now so we have up 
down and down is going to change our y speed this and that's okay and then we need left and left is gonna do the same as the same as up except on the x-axis and right is going to do the same as down except on the x-axis and this dot y speed can just be zero nice so we're going to save that and test this out so down isn't doing anything we need to add in our brakes Cool, so that's much nicer. It works as expected. But we need to handle what happens whenever it hits the parameter. So let's do that now. I guess the best place to do that is inside the update function. So we can check if this.x is greater than canvas dot width. So this would mean that the snake is over on this parameter. So if it's over in that parameter, what do we need to do? Well, we need to bring it back to zero. So we can do that by saying this dot x equals zero. And if we save that, refresh our page, we're just gonna see what happens. So it's gonna reach this parameter and come back there. Nice, perfect. So we need to do the same for all the other parameters. So to do this, we're going to copy this, paste it four times, and we can check if this dot y is greater than canvas dot height, then this dot y needs to be zero. If this dot x is less than zero, then we need to make this dot x canvas dot width. And if this dot y is less than zero, we need to make this dot y canvas dot height. If we save that, refresh our page, we should be able to move around and should be able to handle all four parameters. Nice, so this is working really nice now. So now the next thing we need to do is handle the fruit and what happens whenever the snake hits the fruit. So let's do that now. We just clean this up a bit first. So, okay. Similar to before, we're gonna make a snake class or snake file, or sorry, a fruit file. Fruit.js and here going to use a script tag for fruit as well cool and what is fruit going to be so again we're going to make a constructor method and it's going to have coordinates again and this time we're just going to not say what they are yet okay so now that we have a fruit how do we decide where it goes well this is going to be a random location so let's just make a function pick location nice and it's going to take no parameters so this dot x equals math dot floor because you want it to be an integer and we're going to pick a random number dot random and this is the x so it's going to be a max of the rows this one plus one multiplied by scale. Okay, so we can do the same for y, except instead of rows, we can use columns. And y. Cool. So we're just going to see if this is working by here inside the setup. We're going to make a fruit. And then we're gonna call fruit dot pick. 
to pick or choose location. Pick location. And if we console.log fruit, we should be able to see the x and y. Okay, nice. So it's picking 2, 10, and 80. And this is using our scale. So it's going up in increments of 10. Nice. Okay. So how are we actually going to do this? So I guess we're going to need pick location. And after the location is picked, we're going to have to draw our fruit the same way as we're drawing our snake. So we need another function. This dot draw function. And what do we need to do? We're going to pick our color first. And we're just going to start off as white again. Fill rect this dot x, this dot y. And the size is going to be scale, scale again. Nice. So if we refresh this, what's happening? Are we calling draw yet? No, we're not calling fruit dot draw. Okay, I can actually see an issue here. So we're going to be clearing this rect. And oh no, it should be okay. So we can do fruit dot draw inside here. And if I refresh again, we can see yeah, we're getting nice fruit here. So that's that's cool. But I actually saw something weird. It seemed to flash black for some reason. I'm not sure why that's happening. Maybe it's something to do with the order here. Maybe this needs to go below. Eh, it seems to have fixed it. Okay, so we're going to try to get a better color for that. And to pick colors, I usually do something like this. We start off with something like red, and then we're just going to choose a color. Something like this. Nice, so we can change our fruit to that. And now if we go back to the console and refresh, you can see now we have a nice green colored fruit. And this is where scale came in. So because we used scale, now you can see it's right in line with it. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna change that back because I'd rather that the snake was above the fruit whenever it overlaps. So if we go back here and put this above the snake. Now you can see whenever we cross over the fruit that the snake should be on top of it. Nice, cool. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to handle what happens whenever we hit the fruit. Well, the snake needs to get longer. So let's do that now. I think it's gonna be something like a check. So we're gonna to need to have a if statement here. And we're gonna make a function on snake called eat. It's gonna take fruit. Then we're just gonna console.log eating. Right, so we need to make this eat function on snake. So here if I say this dot eat equals function and it takes fruit as an argument. We're just going to print out fruit for now and see what that gives us. So every tick we have fruit and we have the coordinates. Nice. So we can use these fruit coordinates and compare them to the snake coordinates. So to do that we're going to check if uh, this dot x equals fruit dot x uh, and this dot y equals fruit dot y. And we want to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Nice. So now we have this eat function. And we're calling here. And if this if this is true, we're going to print out eaten. So let's refresh our page and see if this works. So whenever we hit the fruit, it's printed out eating. 
Nice. Cool. So let's get rid of that log we were printing. And we can also get rid of it here. So what actually needs to happen if we are eating the fruit? Well, we need to move the location of the fruit. So to do that, we can say fruit dot pick location. This is going to give it a new X and a new Y. And whenever it comes back around to draw, it's going to refresh its location. So if I save that, refresh the page, and try to eat the fruit, then we can see, yeah, it moves. Nice. So this is working as expected the way we wanted it to. So the last thing we need to do is, whenever we eat the fruit, make the snake longer. And I'm assuming this is also going to be the most difficult bit. But let's give it a go. So inside the snake, we're going to also have to store the total fruit eaten, which I'm going to call it total, and it's going to be initialized as zero. And we're also going to make something called tail, which is going to be an empty array, an empty array, and this is going to store the coordinates of where the snake is. Nice. So what do we need to do with this? Well, I guess inside the update, we can update the tail, and we kind of need to shift it to the left every clock cycle. So how are we going to do this? Well, I guess it's going to come before we're updating the snake's coordinates, because we want to get the coordinates at the minute and shift them to the left. So we're going to say for let i equals zero, I less than this dot tail dot length minus one um, and we're going to increment i. So this is going to go through this next tail and we need to move them to the left. So this dot tail i equals this dot tail i plus one. Nice. So that's going to go through the snake's tail and shift them to the left. And now that we've shifted to the left, we need to add the new item to the end, which is going to be done like this. This dot tail, and the index is going to be this dot total, which is the amount of fruit we've eaten, minus one, and it's going to equal x, this dot x, the current position, and y is going to be this dot y. Nice. And they're getting shifted to the left. Okay, so now that we're storing this tail inside the draw, we need to do something with this. So instead of the way we're drawn at the minute, where we're just sing filling this single rectangle, we need to loop through this tail and draw each rectangle of the tail. Cool. So to do that, we're going to say for let i equals zero i less than this dot tail dot length i plus plus and what do we need to do we need to do the same as this except instead of doing this dot x we need to do this dot tail i dot x right nice and we can do the exact same for y and it's still size scale and we also need to draw its current position cool so we're going to save that and run it and i don't know what the chance of this working is but probably quite low if we hit it yeah we're still the same size so something isn't right here Okay, so I don't think we were actually, yeah. So we need to increment total. If we save that, total has been increased. Let's refresh. This may fix it. Nice, so our length increases. Cool, so this is the basics of the snake game finished. As you can see, we can hit the boundaries, which will bring us back. And whenever we hit a fruit, it increases their length by one. 
I guess the one thing that the snake game is missing is actually how the game ends by the snake dying by hitting itself and I think this video is going to be long enough without doing that but if you'd like to see that then please let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching and see you next time.